This morning, I invite you to reflect with me on a statement that makes some Christians uncomfortable. But given the increasing prevalence of hatred and violence in our nation, and forgive me, I've lost count of the number of mass shootings this week, and I'm tired of wearing my orange stole, precisely because of all that is wrong in the world, I believe it is important not to shy away from the challenging claims of the faith. I'll attempt to offer a way for us to straddle this tension between conviction and humility. But I am of the conviction that maybe more so than ever, we need to surrender our lives to God's will as revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. Church membership, quote unquote, is not enough. We are called to be disciples of Jesus, to learn from Jesus, allow Jesus to change our lives, and then to live those changed lives. And so John's Gospel, chapter 14, in verses 6 and 7, Jesus is quoted as saying, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. These words of Jesus make some Episcopalians uneasy because we are part of a denomination that rightly prides itself on inclusivity. In our own baptismal covenant, we are called to strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being because we understand from Scripture that all persons are created in the image and likeness of God. So the question might become, how can we be inclusive? How can we respect the dignity of every human being if we are to take seriously what some deem to be an exclusive claim that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life? Wouldn't it be more respectful and dignifying to other religions to say that Jesus is a way, a truth, a life. After all, aren't all religions the same? Or at least, don't all religions lead to God? Many of you know that I've been heavily involved with Interfaith Saginaw during my time here at St. John's. From the outside looking in, one might infer from my interfaith engagement that, sure, I'd adhere to the notions that all religions are the same and that all religions lead to God. Well, I don't. In fact, Nobody in Interfaith Saginaw that I know of, and I count several of them as some of my closest friends in Saginaw, nobody in Interfaith that I know of, from Muslims to Buddhists to Hindus to Methodists, nobody can say with any intellectual integrity that all religions are exactly the same. They're not which is precisely why Interfaith Saginaw leadership made clear from the group's inception that we do not believe in or promote religious syncretism. Interfaith engagement is not and should not be a melting pot that reduces diversities to concoct a new religion. Yes, there are commonalities. Of course, there are universals 
that can be found across faith traditions. But we cannot gloss over the fact that there are particularities in each religion. There are stark differences that, quite honestly, cannot be reconciled. Our goal with Interfaith Saginaw was to find ways to work together in spite of differences. And yes, I know that I am naive and idealistic, but just because key understandings of God and God's relationship with humanity are not the same, that doesn't mean that we have to hate one another. If faith communities cannot get along, what hope is there for our nation's elected leadership, not to mention society as a whole? Look where all the walls of division constructed with hate have gotten us. Now, bearing all of this in mind, and please hear what I'm saying, and please don't hear what I'm not saying. Because there are universalities and particularities in each religion, what we find when we strip away emotion, fear, and misinformation, and compare and contrast doctrine and practice, what we find is that all religions make truth claims that are in some sense exclusive. It's not Christianity alone that makes a claim about reality that on the surface might appear exclusive. Even atheists, as inclusive as some atheists claim they are, and as much as atheists love to bash religion for supposedly causing all of the world's problems, even atheists make exclusive claims with their belief system. Yes, atheism, logically speaking, is a system of belief. And in that sense, atheism is a religion. And it's ironic how atheists do not hold themselves to the same standards regarding truth claims that they do Christians. Atheists harp on Christians for failing to prove that God exists, while atheists themselves see no problem in not being able to prove that God does not exist. That's called hypocrisy. Plus, atheism postulates that one can lead a moral life without God. The problem with that is, if God does not exist, how could we even know what morality is? If you have doubts about religious truth claims, then that's fine. That's normal. That's healthy. Agnosticism is a more honest stance than atheism. But let's be real. All religions make so-called exclusive or particular claims. And as you might expect, the most prominent particular claim of Christianity revolves around the person of Jesus of Nazareth. The church claims and has claimed over a period of 2,000 or so years that what we have today in, Jude, in John's Gospel, the claim is Jesus of Nazareth is the way, the truth, and the life. The church claims that Jesus is God, who took on human flesh, who taught humanity how to live, who showed us how to live, who died on the cross to reconcile humanity to God, and who was raised from the dead by God the Father so that when we die from this life, that death is not the end of our existence. Instead, Death from this life is a transition into eternal life with God the Father. And that's all because of Jesus. The Christian church has contended over this time period that Jesus was more 
than simply a moral person, more than just a wise teacher, more than an influencer. The church proclaims that Jesus was and is God in human flesh. That is the particularity of Christianity. Stated negatively, some would say that is the exclusivity of Christianity. But here's why I use the word particularity and non-exclusivity. A moment ago, I mentioned that some people like to say that all religions lead to God. And I think I understand what's meant by that statement. It's an attempt to promote tolerance. But I don't believe it. I don't believe the statement that all religions lead to God. I don't believe that's true. And here's one reason I believe that statement is not true. When we take the Christian story at face value, the Christian faith is not a religion in which humanity finds its way to God. Let me say that again. Stay with me. When we take the Christian story at face value, the Christian faith is not a religion in which humanity finds its way to God. It's the exact opposite. The Christian story is about God finding God's way to humanity in the person of Jesus of Nazareth. That's how I understand the Christian proclamation to be different from all other faith claims. Far from being, far from the church being an exclusive institution, although certain branches of the Christian faith whether conservative or progressive, or just that, the gospel shows us just how inclusive, inviting, and welcoming God is in Jesus. Earlier in John's gospel, chapter 3, verse 16, we read, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. God became human in Jesus for all people, for the entire cosmos. Now, am I standing here telling you that all non-Christians won't go to heaven when they die? No, I'm not saying that at all. That's above my pay grade. I'm a simple, lowly parish priest, I am not qualified to determine anyone's eternal destiny, especially the destinies of adher adherence to religions that don't believe in heaven and the afterlife the way that Christians do. And no, I'm not standing here intending to disparage other religions. That's not my goal either. I, find, I, I have found and I do find value in different faiths that I engage. More importantly, I've made lifelong friends. But I would be less than honest if I approached today's gospel passage by ignoring the universals and particulars of the Christian faith. And so what I'm attempting to say may go something like this. God is inclusive inviting, loving, empathetic, compassionate, grace-filled, forgiving, liberating, redeeming, and life-giving. And I have faith that this is true about God when I see Jesus. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.